It's so interesting. It's so interesting. It's so, it's so interesting. interesting. It's interesting. Welcome to It's So Interesting, where people talk about their work and life experience. I am George Spitzer. Today I'm talking with Tim Collins, who is a technical horse rescue specialist and instructor. Okay, let's get right to it, Tim. What is a technical horse rescue specialist and instructor? I have never met someone with that title before. Well, the distinction would be someone who deals with a horse that is in immediate danger of uh, harm or, or dying because of uh, an accident or a disaster, as opposed to an animal that may have been uh, neglected or uh, not been taken care of. So uh, a horse trailer uh, accident, a backcountry trail um, accident, even a horse in a pool or a confined space uh, such as a abandoned well, that type of thing. So uh, dealing with the immediate uh, threat of, of uh, harm. Give me a couple of four instances because I don't have an image of what it is you do with a horse. I mean, these horses weigh what? Two, About a thousand pounds. A thousand uh, pounds. An average horse is yeah. a thousand pounds. We live in Santa Barbara, California, where you have a variety of, of environments. So you can have people riding along the bluffs uh, of the beach, horse lose its footing, and end up down at the bottom of the bluffs at the beach. Uh, we have the beautiful uh, mountains, and people take trail rides, and somebody can come down a uh, a trail from the top on a mountain bike and someone on a horse going up the trail they meet a horse even though it's a thousand pound animal and should win a battle for the trail uh, they are a flight animal and so uh, something coming around a corner and just pops out of nowhere puts them into the runaway mode and on a narrow trail that only uh, ends up being bad. Now I'm curious this is an entirely different area or does it slide off of or part of an area of people commonly known because of media as a horse whisperer. Do you need to, do you have those talents? Do you use those talents in the rescuing of horses? Well if you talk to my horses they probably say I don't have the talent but <laughs> when you go to a rescue th there is a certain amount of innate ability that comes. You see it when you can walk into a environment where there's a lot of stress and walk up to a horse and help calm it down and it, it's not a it's not a same vein type of thing but they can um, tell you're a good guy and they can tell you they're f for the benefit of them and yeah. horses can tell that I've learned through a couple of acquaintances there's always one horse in one's life not necessarily one love in your life but I'm talking about one horse in your life that you that makes life a bigger life do you have such a have, have you had or do you have such an experience absolutely I bought a horse on a what's called a board auction where uh, someone does not uh, have the ability to pay what's owed to the ranch and then ultimately the ranch has to sell off the, the animals. And I bought the, the foal of a mare that was uh, sent to this farm for breeding and then the mare and the foal were going to be sold uh, to cover the costs. And he was just about two years old. Nobody was bidding, so I figured hey, for, for this kind of money, I could uh, try to teach a horse uh, some of the things that I had always wanted to try to teach the horse, like to drive, uh, to team pen, and do trail riding very well. And if it didn't turn out, I wasn't, I wasn't out a bunch of money. So I bid on this horse, and I, I had the high bid. I think it was like $200. He turned about to, uh, out to be, of course, the most incredible horse that one could ever ask for. An example is I had a six, seven-month-old baby, and he came out to the cross ties where the horse was, and the horse typically was very compliant and would give me his legs when it was time to clean out the hoofs. Carlin, my little uh, seven-month-old, came out, uh, picked up a brush, and started brushing the horse's leg. Sand Dancer was the horse's name, and Sand Dancer would not give me one of his legs because Carlin was in his blind spots horse has a blind spot? Yes, yeah, so the horse actually has several blind spots. The horse couldn't see Carlin, so he didn't want to pick up his feet or his leg. His mother came out and called Carlin to her, and the horse became very compliant again. I recognized what, what may have just gone on, so I asked Lonnie, my wife, if, if I could borrow Carlin again for a moment, called him back and gave him the brush, attempted to pick up a leg again. 
and the same thing occurred. San Nasser did not want to give me a leg. So just the ability to have compassion or care for little ones of, of whatever species to me is, is special. Another time I fell off him and this was at the surf living right there at the beach. We would ride the beach. There were a lot of stones and moss or algae, whatever it was, which caused Sand Dancer to slip. And I ended up falling off of him. And I did it in such a way that I was taking him off balance a little bit. And the riders that were with me were just in awe of how he moved around because it was obvious to them that he was doing everything he could to maintain his balance and find a footing and not step on me, as opposed to just thinking every man for himself. <laughs> so he was an incredible horse. I say was because at 29 years old, about a year ago, I had to uh, send him on his way to his next chapter. It must have been a glorious 27 years. It was. Is it likely that you ever have another horse like that no. again? It's a no. once-a-lifetime thing. You hope you expect to produce incredible horses. You find over time that you had a special time, and that was it. You've had the experience or lived through losing a horse. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I've actually uh, gotten to a, a site, raised the horse's head, uh, actually sat down. Uh, we were we were waiting for some uh, some padding and and um, some more people to to assist on this because of the the remoteness of this uh, machinery was not going to be it so we needed manpower I got there raised the horse's head and put it in my lap and then about a minute or two later the horse uh, passed away I felt better in the fact that that I had been there and was giving the horse a sense that that people did care you deal with a lot of horses and you deal with a lot of people. And the interaction sometimes isn't all that good. Sometimes it's great. But in the general sense, what is it you would like to leave in this show with our listeners about the, quote, right thing to do with horses? Usually when the wrong things are done, it's ignorance. So what light do you want to shed on human ignorance with relationships and horses or when you're around a horse? Several things that come to mind. One is the drama that humans bring to something. That we take it in and it becomes part of us and we want to share that in the future and we want to identify ourselves as part of something that took place. And so the drama that we bring to a scenario is foreign to a horse or to any animal. And so the animal is in the moment, and if you can get the animal out of this stressful trauma of the time right then, get them past that, then they can go to, okay, right now there's grass, I have stable footing, I'm good. So many times when I'm actually with an animal and I'm talking to them, and I tell my students or, or uh, trainees that when you're with an animal, you can talk to the animal. And you're talking to them in a calm, friendly voice. It's not a sing-songy, but it's just a calm voice. And you can tell them anything. Because you can lie to a horse. That's the interesting thing. You can tell them, look, we're going to get done with this. Then we can go downtown and go styling and profiling and whatever it is. Doesn't matter. Because they're not going to hold you to it. But you do it in a manner of... This is just part of what's getting ready to go down town or whatever it is. And so don't bring the drama. No Hollywood values. No Hollywood. Absolutely not. Another thing is with a thousand pound animal, there's a lot of blood inside that vessel. If there's a laceration or something and you come upon the scenario and see all this blood and gore, unfortunately some of the time you have someone says, oh, this poor animal, we've got to put it out of its misery. Well, we can't compare the amount of blood that we would produce versus a horse. So in order to really be fair to the animal, get a veterinarian involved right away. They're the ones that can determine the need. Animals, particularly horses, are incredibly resilient. I had a photograph of a horse out of Florida that suffered from the uh, uh, wildfires that they had. And the horse had the flesh actually was burned and peeled off 
and I want to say probably a fifth of the horse. And in six months, they had all grown back again. We also got locally, we, we were involved with a, with a horse that had fallen and impaled itself on a, a T post, one of those fencing posts that you look down from the top of it in the shape of a T, a steel post, and had impaled its chest and it was a, a, an older mare, and the, the owner, the man involved, called to his wife to, give, uh, to throw something down to him to, to stop the bleeding, and she threw him a bandana. And he yelled up, no, I need something big like a sweatshirt. And he literally stuffed this sweatshirt up in the cavity of this uh, wound. Two weeks later, the wound was closed in. I want to say four weeks later, there was a young child of the family was on top of the horse riding it. But if you were out in the field and you saw this, you may have made that wrong decision to put the animal out of its misery. And it's like, no, they are incredibly resilient. So no drama, calmness, level-headedness, analysis, and professionalism is the horse's best friend. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking with Tim Collins. Thank you for being here, Tim. If you would like to contact him or listening in to this show or any other show, go to itssointeresting.com. It's so interesting. It's so interesting. It's so, it's so interesting. interesting. It's interesting.